This is your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Now the Equitable Life Assurance Society has a special message to fathers and mothers who are ambitious for their children to have a college education. An equitable education fund is the painless way to pay for a college education. It's the way to make sure that your boy or girl gets the advantage of college training regardless of what happens to you. Interested? Then please listen carefully in about 14 minutes for further details on an equitable education fund. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Fraudulent Bankruptcy. It's titled, The Telltale Cargo. The nature of the case dramatized tonight from the official files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation may come as something of a surprise to many listeners. There are probably very few of us who in this year 1951 would expect a crime which would seem to be somewhat in a class with piracy. But to the agents of your FBI, there is no such thing as the unexpected. They are trained and prepared to meet any and all situations. As tonight's story so clearly proves, Tonight's FBI file opens on a tugboat crossing one of the Great Lakes as it tows a heavily loaded barge. A young man stands on the deck of the tug, futilely trying to light a match when the captain approaches, holding out his lit cigarette. Yeah, try this. Thanks. How's the leg? Okay, I think. Yeah. Take it easy when we head to Cleveland. How long will we be there? Oh... Two or three days. Hey, the socks are in for a double header. Our base boy. Why don't you come fishing? The muskies are running. I'd rather see Ted Williams run. Ted Williams. Huh? An old buck in the barge. We can't hear you! He's calling for help. What? Oh! It is listed from port side. In fact, they'll cut the hawk out. Oh, Charlie! Left full rudder! Left full rudder! You got the axe, friend? Yeah. They're coming, Buck! Stop, jump! You got the line cut, friend? Yeah. Charlie! All ahead, pull! Get it on the barge! Right? Barge is listed. Yeah. We're approaching the barge, Cap. Stop, all. Right. Hey, it looks like Buck's going to jump. Dog Buck, stay aboard. There he goes. He's pulling the line. Okay. Charlie, fall back one third. Yo. Grab the line, Buck. How's he doing? He's got the line. Yeah, give me a hand. Yeah. <clears throat> Hold tight, Buck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Here you go. Thanks, boys. Thanks. Uh, Charlie, stop all and keep her nose into the bar. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what happened, Buck? Oh, well, it must have, must have hit something. Water came pouring in under one of the crates. Uh, Fred, we better board her. No, I don't. She'll flip over any minute. Well, i got to try to save that cargo. Now, huh? listen to me. She's my barge. I know her. Tell you, she'll flip over. Come on, Fred. Right. Uh, wait, wait, don't. Oh. Careful with that leg now. Yep. Yeah. There. The water's coming in over here. From under that crate. Mm-hmm. Come on, let's move it. That port side's almost under now. Now we got time. Yep. Hey, that's the heaviest thing. 
best one I ever saw. Hey, hey look at her pour. Whatever could have made a hole that way? I don't know, but nothing will plug that. It looks like it was blown out. Yeah! Yeah! He's going! He's right. Come on, Captain. Let's get back on the truck. The following week, at a nearby FBI field office, Special Agent Hal Weber approaches the desk of Agent Jim Taylor. Hi, Jim. Oh, hello, Hal. I thought you were on vacation. Yes, A.C. called me back. Oh, it's a tough break. Did you sign in? No, I hit town last night and went right on to an assignment. I've been over to Maritime Inquiry all day. I brought you pretty complete notes on the testimony. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why bring them to me? Chief said to turn everything over to you. Oh? I've got to take a statement over at Memorial Hospital. Oh, I see. This is an inquiry into a barge sinking out on the lake. The tug W.R. Jones was hauling it at the time. What's the reason for the inquiry? Captain Fannin of the tug reported he thought the barge sank because a hole had been blown in her hull. Uh, who was riding the barge? Oh, waterfront character named Buck Nelson. You got any background on him? He leased it from Consolidated Boat and rented it for short hauls. He testified the tug was going so fast a submerged log ripped clean through the barge's hull. How thick are those things? Oh, four-inch pine. Take a pretty sharp log to rip through that, wouldn't it? Yeah, whatever the reason was, the cargo's gone for good. What was it, Al? It was aspirin. It belonged to the Page Drug Company. From what I understand, that's a one-man outfit, somebody named Robert Page. He justified? Uh-huh. He said it was in bottles, but they weren't watertight, so the minute they submerged, goodbye aspirin. Yeah. Well, what's our angle? The barge owner thinks it may have been scuttled. Oh. Yeah, here, Jim. Here's everybody's address. Page, Captain Fannin off the tug, and Buck Nelson. All right, thanks, Al. I'll start interviews. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Page. Hi, Skipper. Have a chair. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Well, <clears throat> well, the inquiry ended today. Do you have to testify again? No. I was there, but they didn't call me. That's fine. When will the board give a decision? Yeah, in about a week, I guess. Oh, uh, <laughs> did, you, uh, did you like what I said when they asked me them questions? Yes, your testimony was very good. <laughs> now, <clears throat> when can I get my money? I've got it right here. Oh, fine, fine. Here you are. Fifty, hundred, one fifty, two. Uh, mm-hmm. I said thanks. And uh, this is your ticket for the train. Fine, fine, fine. That's all, Skipper. Oh, oh. Well, <clears throat> so long, Mr. Page. Bye. I'll uh, write and let you know where I am. Do that. Now, if I ever need another barge scuttles, you'll do it for me. Down there, anybody aboard? You're looking for somebody, mister? Well, yes, I am. Captain Fannin. Well, come aboard. Thank you. I'm Captain Fannin. Oh, how are you, Captain? I'm Special Agent of the FBI here. Here's my credentials. Yeah. Well, let's get inside. All right. Careful step. Yeah. Thanks. Go ahead. All right. Mate, Fred Hunt. Mr. Hunt, Taylor's my name. Hi, right, Mr. Taylor. How are you? It's from the FBI. I'm not on the barge deal. Yeah, that's right. I've had the Marines in on it before they're through. <laughs> what can I do for you, Taylor? Well, I wasn't at the inquiry this morning, but I've got some of the testimony. I'd like to go over it briefly, if you don't mind. Well, not much to go over. The old man's lying. That's right. Well, now, as I understand it, you're not positive there is an explosion. You just think so. Yeah, I'm positive about one thing. We were on automatic pilot when Buck Nelson started yelling. We were doing four knots an hour. That's about five miles an hour, isn't it? No, a little under. Well, oh, but say it's fine. Oh. Still be too slow for any log to shear through that hull. Had you been speeding before the accident? No, and I could prove it. Uh, just take a look at this chart. Uh-huh. Now, we picked up the barge at Pier 19, where we are now. This is it here. I see. And our log shows we pulled out at 9.30 in the morning. Barge sank out here... Uh, the exit, right there. That's mm-hmm. 28 miles from the dock. Well, we were averaging around four miles an hour. We were bucking the wind all the way, too. 
Even if we wanted to speed, we couldn't have. Mm-hmm. Um, Captain, mm-hmm. how deep is the lake out there where you have the X mark? Well, this marking here's 60, but uh, these shaded lines mean a shoal. I, huh? I'd say the barge sank in about oh, 40 feet. I see. Uh, you two staying here? Board the town? Uh, no, I, I mean in town. Yeah, we got to. They picked up a paper. We're stuck till the board makes their decision. I see. Well, I'm on my way now to see Buck Nelson. Do you, uh, you know him well? Oh, had a few drinks with him now and then. What can you tell me about him? <laughs> He's a harmless old bus. At least I always thought he was harmless until he told that story at the inquiry. I see. Well, thanks, Captain. You too, Mr. Hunt. If I have anything else, I'll catch you at the hearing. What are you doing around this lake? Finishing my report, Jim. How about you? Well, I just interviewed that tugboat captain and his mate. Did yeah, you get anything? No, just confirmation on the testimony. The old man from the barge is the one I'd like to see. Buck Nelson? Yeah. Well, his address is in my notes with the other. Yeah, I know, but he's moved. Oh? Check the waterfront saloon? Yeah, all of them. Nelson hasn't been seen since the second day of the inquiry. That when he moved? Yeah, as far as I can find out, he, he just plain disappeared. Uh-huh. He told me the morning of the inquiry that he'd been on the waterfront here for 31 years. Kind of proud of it, too. Yeah, I heard the same thing. That's why I don't particularly like his vanishing at this point. Well, there'd really be no reason for him to hang around with a barge gone, you know. No, I guess not. Oh, Hal, did you check on this man, uh, Robert Page? The one who owned the aspirin? Yeah. Well, he's got no record, and he's been a wholesale drug supplier quite a few years. That's about all I got. Well, now, Buck Nelson told the inquiry board he used to haul fairly regularly for Page, didn't he? About one load a month. Well, and if Nelson does get himself a new barge, he... Just might contact Page. Yeah, probably. I think I'll go see him. Come right in, Mr. Taylor. Thank you. My secretary says you're with the FBI. That's right, Mr. Page. Here are my credentials. I see. Well, what can I do for you? Well, you can help me find a man named Buck Nelson, if you can. Who? Buck Nelson. The old man whose barge was hauling that shipment of aspirin for him. Oh, sure. Do you know where he is? Well, not offhand, but my secretary must have his address. The new one? The same place we contacted him. Uh, a rooming house over by the river. Oh, no, he's gone from there. Oh, when? Well, he moved the day he finished testifying at the inquiry. Well, I wouldn't have any idea where he is. Uh, what did you want him for? His testimony was in direct conflict with the story told by the men on the tug. They think he scuttled the barge. I can't believe that. Well, that was their testimony. How long have you known Nelson? Not long. Ever had any other unusual experiences with him? No. How much of a load was he hauling for you? Nine thousand dollars worth. Insured? No. It's a pretty big loss. You want to know how big it really was? I filed my bankruptcy papers this morning. <laughs> Return in just a moment to tonight's exciting case from the official file of your FBI. Now let's visit the living room of Mr. Edward Farrell. Ed is talking life insurance to Fred Barton, a representative of the Equitable Life Assurance Society. And another thing, our friends the bishops were over the other night, and Jim was telling me about an insurance plan he has that'll cover his kids' college expenses. Can you tell me what it's all about? Well, Mr. Farrell, I drew up the program for Jim Bishop's boy. The Equitable Society calls it an Equitable Education Fund. It's an endowment life insurance policy that's all paid up when your boy's ready for college. It's the painless way to pay for a college education. Hmm. Do you mind explaining? Well, you've probably bought things on easy payment plans, haven't you? Sure. The house, my car, and radio, too. So you've been able to buy a number of things you wouldn't have been able to afford if you hadn't been able to pay for them in installments. Well, that's why the Equitable Education Fund is such a good thing. Easy payments starting now are spread over 16 or 17 years. Well, that's better than taking a beating during the four years your boy's actually in college. And that makes sense. Another thing, an equitable education fund is sure. If you die, the fund is immediately paid up in full, and it's turned over to your boy with interest 
when he's ready to enter college. Does your kid have to be any special age when you start? My kid's only a year old, you know. Well, the earlier you start, the lower your yearly cost. Figure up how much money you can spare to put into a plan like this. Maybe you can afford one that will pay half of the educational cost. If you have children, why not get the cost of an equitable education fund from your equitable representative? These equitable men give you the information you need and let you make up your own mind. Get in touch with your equitable representative or write care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Telltale Cargo. You have just heard the opening of a crime in which two seemingly ill-assorted characters have joined forces to break the law. Buck Nelson is a drunkard from the dregs of society. Mr. Page, if you accept him at his face value, is a respected businessman. What they have in common is a distorted mind, a criminal mind. Such a mind may be extremely intelligent. But its ability to function with true efficiency is blocked by a warped temperament, a childish, unreliable personality. From these misfits are recruited today's army of criminals, people whose thinking is muddled, people whose acts are characterized by a strange mixture of shrewdness and stupidity. Their plans often combine amazing ingenuity with an equally amazing lack of ordinary horse sense. That a man like Page should join in a conspiracy with a befuddled outcast like Buck Nelson is a perfect example of this basic weakness of the criminal mind. Tonight's file continues later that day at the FBI field office. Special Agent Jim Taylor is signing in when Agent Hal Weber approaches. Jim, you see Mr. Page yet? Yeah, Hal. He had quite a story to tell, huh? The barge going down forced him into bankruptcy. I think we ought to look into those papers. Why, you think there's something wrong with them? There might be. There's a lot of things about Mr. Page that don't quite add up. For one thing, he sounded almost satisfied when he told me about the bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. What's more, he acted as though he barely knew Buck Nelson. I understand Nelson worked for him quite often. There was more of a relationship than that. I went by the Consolidated Boat Company. The owners of the barge? Yeah, that's right. Buck Nelson didn't have enough credit to lease the barge on his own without a deposit. So he got somebody to guarantee the rental payments. Oh, Page? Right. I also stopped by police headquarters. Well, Nelson has no record, Jim. We checked that. Oh, well, he's got a traffic record, though. He was arrested for drunk driving, and who do you think bailed him out? Mr. Robert Page. A lot to do for a casual acquaintance. Yeah. Unfortunately, it doesn't prove anything concrete. We may have more news in the morning, Jim. Captain Fannin called in. Now, what for? The inquiry board is sending a diver down to inspect the barge's hull. He's going out on Fannin's tug. Yeah, that's great. Come on inside. Will you want to make a phone call? Yeah, to whom? Captain Fannin. If there's room, I'd like to go out with him. Cap, you heard from the diver? Not yet. We were right about the depth. He's using 43 feet of air hose. Oh? Uh, Fred, uh, hook up that spare earphone. Give it to Taylor. All right. Well, lucky we didn't get too much wind today. Well, that wouldn't make too much difference to him, would it, Captain? No, but it'd be tough on us up here. Mm. When the wind really blows, this lake gets rough. Here you are. No, thanks very much. The hog stands. The hog stands. Can you hear me? Yes, Miller. Taylor, want to talk to him? Yeah, please. Thanks. Miller, this is Agent Taylor. Have you located the place where the hull was ripped open? No, not yet. I'll call you when I do. Okay. Fred, you in the cabin for us all some coffee. Sure, Captain. Taylor, uh, you heard when that inquiry board's handed down a decision? No, Captain, I haven't. I hope they do it soon. Go upstairs. Can you hear me? Yes, Miller. Oh? There's clean wood right through to the bottom of the hall. She was stored in by a submerged log. The log had come through a place where the wood was rotting. Mm, that's what I said at the inquiry. And another thing, there's a black smudge around the hole on the deck. Looks 
Miller, you see any crates down there? Yeah. The water's beating some of them pretty bad. But a few are still in good shape. Cap, can we get some of the crates up here? Sure. Miller, stay where you are. you went to New York. I went to New York, but I didn't like it. So I came right back to River Street. River Street at the junction of... You're Maple drunk. Street. Not yet, but I will be. Why didn't you go someplace else? Why'd you come back here? My friends are here. You know something, Mr. Page? It's no fun drinking with strangers. I wanted to see you. What for? I spent all my money. Well, that's too bad. And I figured you might want to stake me again. Oh, no. No? No? The inquiry board ain't handed down their word yet. Now, if I was to tell all of a sudden, if I should suddenly remember what happened and call them... How much do you want? Five hundred bucks to do it. I need it now. Today. You say you're at River Street? Yeah. River Street at the junction of... I know. I'll get the money and bring it right over. Come in on Buck Nelson? No. We really want him now. The diver found evidence that the barge was scuttled. Oh, uh-huh. how? Well, there was some kind of a blast on deck. He found a black smudge around the hole. Did you bring up any of the sunken creeks? Yeah, we lifted a few up onto the tug and opened them. They were filled with old magazines. Uh-huh. You think Buck Nelson was working with Page? Could have been, huh? Did it mean larceny with those bankruptcy papers? It's worth checking. Where do we start? You take warehouses, will you? See if anybody stored that load of aspirin. Okay. I'll find out what I can about Mr. Page's financial condition. <laughs> My name is Taylor. Yes, Mr. Taylor. I'm a special agent of the FBI here in my credentials. And what can I do for you, sir? I'd like some information about a man named Robert Page. He bought some drugs from your company. I know, Mr. Page. Do you know anything about his financial condition? Quite a good deal. He paid us with a bad check. Weber speaking. Now, Jim Taylor. Yeah, how are you doing, Jim? Well, I got a statement from ABC Drug. Page gave them a bad check for the aspirin. For how much? Nine thousand. He's no piker. Oh, no. did you get anything? I have a lead. It should break by the time you get here. Anything happened, Hal? Yeah, I think I've located the aspirin. Oh, where? In a warehouse in Water Street. In Page's name? It's being traced. Fine, I'll go see him. Come in, Mr. Page. Uh, of course, Mr. Taylor. I'm uh, late for an appointment now. I hope this won't take long. No, sir, it shouldn't. Good. Mr. Page, I've been asking some questions about your financial standing. Oh? Yes, I found out about that bad check that you gave the ABC Drug Company last month. Well, that shortage was an accident. I explained that to them. And they gave you 30 days to make it good. Well, Mr. Page, your time is up this week. If that $9,000 worth of aspirin hadn't sunk, I could have cleaned up the whole affair. They didn't sink, Mr. Page. What? We brought up a few of the sunken crates. They were loaded with old papers and magazines. Why? But even if the aspirin had gone down, it wouldn't have made any difference. You had that shipment on consignment. You were to sell it in ten days or return it. Having the barge scuttle means a drug company is stuck for the loss. I didn't have any barge scuttled. Well, all the circumstances point the other way, Mr. Page. You were the only one who could have profited from the sinking. If that aspirin isn't at the bottom of the lake, where is it? It's in a warehouse on Water Street. Now, look, I've heard enough of your accusations. These aren't accusations, Mr. Page. They're facts. Ah, Mr. Page. Get out of here, Nelson. Well, why didn't you keep our date? I said get out. Just a minute, please. Are you Nelson, the barge captain? That's right. And you had a date with Mr. Page here? Certainly did. He's lying. Are you going to sit there and tell this man we didn't talk on that little old telephone about an hour ago? He's drunk. Sure, I'm drunk. 
But let me tell you something. You're no friend of mine. The least you could do is to return a favor. Did he do you a favor? I did one for him. Went swimming in the middle of the lake. Look, Nelson. No, that's no kind of exercise for a man of my age. Did Mr. Page pay you to go swimming? <laughs> Two hundred bucks. Now, just a minute. Hold it, Page, uh, will you? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, here I am, broke again. Say, <clears throat> could you let a fellow have a few dollars so I can get on my feet again? Hmm? Well, I'm you? afraid not, but I've got two warrants here. You're both under arrest. Robert Page was tried and convicted for violating the federal bankruptcy statute. Buck Nelson was found guilty at his trial of scuttling a vessel in interstate commerce. Both received long prison sentences. After the findings of the investigation by FBI Special Agents Taylor and Weber were made available to the Marine Inquiry Board, they reinstated the papers of Captain Fannin and the mate, Fred Hunt. Tonight's case concerned the activities of people whose lives do not ordinarily make headlines. Yet the work done by the Federal Bureau of Investigation on this file was important to you, the decent people of America. It was important because it showed how special agents are taught to approach every investigation. No person is to be considered innocent or guilty because of circumstantial evidence. By a ruling of FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, special agents may report only on the facts, and those facts must be proven. The evidence collected by the men of your FBI is turned over to the Attorney General, who tries the case as your representative. The facts given to him must be conclusive enough to stand up in a court of law, in an American court where the accused has as many rights as the accuser. Your FBI is proud of the record it has made, which in the last year saw 98% of the people it arrested found guilty in those open courts. For every special agent knows that truth is the firmest pillar of freedom, of his freedom and yours. Now, a quick review of the Equitable Education Fund. First... It's a painless way to pay for a college education. You spread the cost over many years instead of taking a beating in four. Second, it's sure. From the start, you're certain your children will get the education you want them to have regardless of what happens to you. So, why delay? Ask your equitable representative for full information on an equitable education fund. Or write care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, Armed Robbery. Its title, The Harvest. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious. And any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. Others in the cast were Walter Catlett, Dick Crenna, Whit Connor, Tony Hughes, Bill Johnstone, and Carlton Young. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Harvest on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for A Life in Your Hands, starring Lee Bowman, which follows immediately. This program came to you from Hollywood.